Hello, um, my name is Darko Križić from Prodyna and today we will be talking about um, fraud detection and uh, this is some examples, real world examples and um, the example is based on airlines so everybody knows how airlines work so it's easy to understand. Um, so our problem is we want to detect frauds and um, the um, frauds can be very simple, but frauds can be also very complex. And um, one problem we have with frauds is to, to our false positives. So we have reports something is a fraud which is not in re reality. Um, some examples what frauds are in airline business is uh, short-term bookings for expensive flights. Uh, short-term means, uh, for example, it's booked in the evening and the flight is in the next morning because the fraudies know that uh, this fraud detection doesn't work uh, very well and um, as soon as somebody has flown, uh, the money is lost. So this is a big problem. Um, or um, you have co-chair partners like uh, Star Alliance and somebody books a flight uh, at Lufthansa for United Airlines and flies United and uh, Lufthansa has the cost. And um, what also might happen is uh, there is a booking um, which might be uh, a credit card and uh, which is stolen. And uh, those flights are usually happening in an area which is outside of the standard area of the airline. For example, if you take uh, British Airways and there is a flight somewhere in the Asian Pacific uh, region, then this might also be a, a fraud. And um, if you take a look on the source data, you have uh, flights, you have um, bookings, uh, you see um, it's, it's, it's a desert of data and uh, very hard to see how, how to, to, you don't see any pattern and, and uh, details. So the general approach here is um, what we need is facts, all facts we can get. And uh, sometimes it's not only those, this information, sometimes there's much, much more. So the idea is um, we take all we can get and um, one important thing is we also need historic data so not only current bookings, current flights, also historic ones, because um, some frauds are depending on what happened in the past. And yeah, this data should be connected. And fortunately, I mean, we are here for Neo4j, and Neo4j is a perfect tool for using this. So what we, need was, what we do is we import this data in a graph database, Neo4j, and um, yeah, you get a graph. And this graph, this is really a small example. You can quickly have millions of nodes. But uh, the cool thing is that we now have all facts together that we need. And um, with a graph database, when we connect all our data that we have, different sources, you see red and blue, different sources connected, you know, like flights and bookings, and more sources, so we have more and more information. And we can connect this information, we can query this in a context. So I start somewhere here, and I can walk through the graph, and I see all, all context. And yeah, let's start now with our uh, simple sample here. We have some, um, the purple box, uh, purple circles are bookings. And we have some, some accounts. We have um, the passenger names that bookings were for. We have flights, we have regions. The blue ones are regions. And um, yeah, when you take a manual, when you just take a look on, on, on the data, uh, like here, you very quickly, you're able to identify frauds. Yeah? For this, for example, here is a, is a booking. Uh, this is an account. Here are bookings. And this are the passengers those bookings have been done for. And suddenly there is a new booking for somebody else. Yeah? So somebody, so this might be that's, that this uh, user account is stolen. Yeah? So usually uh, airlines offer, um, uh, have a web page and um, users enter a credit card. And um, so it might be that if, if you hack such a user account, suddenly uh, uh, some users don't use very good passwords, it might happen that somebody tries to, to do a booking using your stolen account with your credit card. And this kind of bookings can be detected relatively easy because we have, um, what, I meant, what I forgot to mention is those first four bookings are historic and this new booking here is uh, current, so it's not flown yet. Um, this is a very, very simple example. Frauds can be really much more, can be really much more complicated, um, but just to get an understanding. Here's another example. Um, this is uh, also a user account. We have a booking, we have two bookings actually for the same person. And then we have a new booking using the same credit card. This small purple one is a credit card. And uh, so what is the, the, the suspiciously 
somebody have been booking without using the user account. So this is also a potential fraud. Uh, I mean, um, detecting those doesn't mean that we have found fraud, but it's a, it's a potential fraud somebody has to take, uh, take a look on. And um, now we have three levels how we can handle this. Number one is we have all our facts in our graph database in the user tool. Here's a screenshot. This is uh, Linkurious. Uh, which allows me to take a deep look into into my, my facts and um, there's trained personal some insurances use this approach mostly so they have trained personal they have this um, this um, tools like Linkurious and they try to detect some you know, suspicious things like um, two people having always the same kind of accident uh, so two, two, two car drivers and two years ago they had the same accident so maybe this is some fraud um, Another approach is to, to have manual rules. Yeah, I, I explained to you there are some use cases and if you, if you talk to customers and say what's, what's, your, what's uh, typical for a fraud, they usually can tell you really stories about uh, we have customers, they, they book short term, uh, very expensive flights and, uh, and so on. So it's very easy now to, to create some rules. I have a sample next slide. So we have uh, rules and there is a custom application and this custom application is used by the end users. It's user friendly. So it displays a suspicious booking, for example. In this case, we can see there is a suspicious booking and now I see my booking history and down here I also see who is the suspect and what airlines usually do, they call up the um, credit card holder or the account holder and ask him, is it, is it true? Did you book uh, this flight or not? And then they mark it as a fraud or as not a fraud. This is okay. Yeah. So um, this, gr this graph is growing. And over time, um, when you mark, for example, that a specific credit card holder is doing very lot of bookings and inviting his friends on his own. So you mark this and uh, those are not found in future anymore. So it's a white listing for, for specific customers. Number three, the most challenging one, uh, machine learning. Machine learning means um, we teach a neural network about um, all the frauds and we uh, show, show the machine learning algorithm uh, real, real frauds and, and uh, yeah, normal bookings which are not frauds. So you, you teach a neural network and then um, it automatically detects, new, you have new data and automatically detects frauds. And, um, you confirm them or you deny them, and uh, the more you do with this, the pre more precise your neural network gets. Yeah? It is a challenge to map graph data into machine learning because um, they work a little bit differently. Um, so there's a lot of uh, room for improvement, but it, there is progress in it. And um, yeah, we are working currently on an application where you can where you can confirm. And for example, you see you you point to a booking and say this is a fraud. And um, it automatically says, okay, this and this and this might also, also now be frauds uh, without explaining the algorithm how, uh, wh why this is a fraud. And uh, then you say, okay, this and this is really a fraud, but this is not. So you are training the neural network over time. So now here's just an example how level two works. So um, we have Cypher. Cypher is an extremely powerful query language and it's relatively easy to, to match frauds. For example, in this case, I'm looking for a credit card with a booking and a customer, and I'm looking for, um, for another booking with a passenger where this, uh, where, where this uh, customer account is not used anymore. And uh, I s this merge, simply I add a new node of type fraud where I, def where I explain the situation and say this is now a fraud. Oh, this uh, schema-less approach helps me to create nodes describing very complex uh, details. And yeah, this is how our graph now look, looks like, the data we had before, and now we have our potential stolen account in this case. And this is how the end user application shows this to the user. And yeah, then um, the user can decide and do all actions that are needed and all facts and all information about this bookings are shown to the user, including contact information and so on. So that's basically the approach we are doing and um, similar approaches are working in the insurance business and other uh, um, companies. They are not very willing to talk about uh, this frauds because uh, uh, it's, a, it's a problem and they are a little bit uh, yeah, shy regarding uh, this. But um, 
yeah, just to explain you the general approach. And yeah, that's, that's all about uh, for today. Yeah, there are. Any questions? Um, the, the challenge is, um, I mean, what I can do, I can create, if you use technologies like SparkML, you, you have to have the data in a specific format that SparkML can handle it, which is not a graph, actually. And um, what you can do, you can create specific queries and fill up um, the data for SparkML, which is, let's say, a table. But the problem is, um, you, you with, with, the, with your you, you can do this. This works. So, so you create specific queries for different use cases. For example, a booking with a, or without credit card. Like facts, like um, I have a booking, and uh, this is done for a specific user. And uh, th now there is a new booking, and there are more historic bookings. And I give this to SparkML, and SparkML this works. But my problem here is, uh, this is the, the level we have currently, the problem here is um, I have to think about the query and the exact information in advance. Because some, um, some frauds are not found with this query, you have to query the data differently. So the challenge, the, the, way we want, the level we want to achieve is that the neural networks learns all facts without uh, that we need to manually specify which of them should be considered. Can you follow me? You get it? Okay. So this is, uh, so we would like to actually map the whole graph to machine learning and uh, yeah, without uh, in advance thinking what might be possible. Because if I, if I define my queries manually, I have the disadvantage that I ha have might forgotten specific use cases. And this is uh, the, the challenge, I mean, okay? Good, you're welcome. <laughs>